Christ has adored him in Christ
Joining us. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. I wish. I just wish we'd be dancing all <laughs> morning. It's a God, wonderful right? day after the Christmas of the boxing. They were back. And indeed, the angels sang, and the Lord is born unto us. What a great, great day we had. I was really excited when um, the, the 25th day and everywhere that you, you went, mm, you yes. saw people ready to, to receive Christ. Mm -hmm. And I am hoping that, well, it's not a matter of an annual thing that mm -hmm. we do, but indeed receiving Christ, yeah. receiving him, and then Reflecting. into a new year, mm -hmm. ch a changed life, a year that we see all the things that you used to do in the yeah. past left there and then you move into a new Certainly. one we're grateful that uh, you stayed there to be part of a show even when we were away we're mm -hmm. back and uh, it's an exciting one we're promising my voice is shaking i was dancing and this, <laughs> this morning know, the, 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 the choir is really getting me on because yeah. Yeah. you know those chorus are really exciting they that's are. why when i hear those things that you guys you love I, yes i have to move. so exactly. it's an exciting morning and from now to 9 a.m that's exactly what we're going to do uh, for you excite you get you shake off what happened and get ready to jump into a new year it's just coming monday is the day yeah, and uh, we we'll see uh, a new year come and you will certainly be part of a conversation this morning george has all the news from uh the world and in ghana africa liberians yeah, voted yeah. yesterday yep. a lot of issues up for this morning for discussion mm -hmm. and so you just stay with us from now till 9 a.m and we'll have all the goodies ready yeah. for you right now um we will certainly be uh, letting you in on what will happen mm -hmm. today. I, I know you, you keep asking of uh, Johnny. He, <laughs> he's so, uh, he now will he's back helped very Mary soon. deliver. So what, yes, what he will be back doing? very soon. So just excited. But right. you can also tell us uh, how you went through the two days, uh, the Christmas and the Boxing Day, yeah. wherever you are. Our platforms are well activated. Tell us how you did it, where you were, and exactly... Uh, what do you t because we told you before we left off that, hey, try and help someone uh, who is exactly. uh, unfortunate, who cannot uh, have fun this Christmas. So you can tell us what you did for that person yeah. Yeah. and let us know how you contributed to making sure that person had fun in the course of the period. But the new year is coming. The resolutions will very soon start. Mm. And we are asking you uh, not to make the ones you know you can't fulfill them. <laughs> Uh, I made a few last year that I couldn't. I'm hoping this year I'll make those uh, uh, empty ones. I'm going to make sure I do only the great ones. So stay with us. George has the news, and then there's more coming up on the show. George. Yeah. My name is George Crane, and up next is news here on New Day. Thanks for staying and on to our very first story. Intellectually disabled persons continue to be stigmatized across the country in spite of efforts to discourage societal neglect. Such children are tagged as evil in some societies, abandoned and even killed. Robert Abelba reports majority of the inmates in the Good Samaritan home at Mafi Adidome in the Central Town District were dumped there by their parents. Population and housing census. There are 737,743 persons with some form of severe disability in Ghana, but no accurate national survey has been carried out to determine the actual disability rate in the country. The World Health Organization, however, estimates the disability rate of Ghana to be between 7 and 10 percent, representing about 1.55 to 2.2 million people. In Ghana, disabled persons constitute a marginalized group characterized by lack of access to public health, education, and other social services. It was in response to some of these needs, a Catholic body, Servants of Charity Group in 2006, established the Good Samaritan Home at Mafi Adidome. 
but the home has to rely on believers for survival since most of the parents have neglected their upkeep roles. We have that stigmatization that they are not human like us. No, they are all human. They have a lot of talent in them, a lot to, to give out to the public if we gave them the love and what they need. Managers and staff now have to tend to the cultivation of vegetables and maize to feed the inmates. These challenges notwithstanding, inmates of the Good Samaritan Home are skilled in carpentry and joinery, electrical works and agriculture production. And still staying on disability, Bernice is struggling through her education with a deformity that started when she was nine years old. After virtually lying down to write a BCE, her problems at the senior high school level seem to have worsened. She struggles to sit through lessons. She needs 95,000 CDs and Brighton and Armed Force report. Bernice has a potential of doing well. She, she's trying uh, despite her incapability or disability she still tries to wrap shoulders with her other colleagues who are capable she tries to relate well but then there's that uh, inferiority complex so you realize that time she's quiet when her other colleagues are jumping doing other stuff then she sits down quietly looking at them and you could see the sadness in her face This nearly threw Bennis out of the boarding house, and this would have meant her dropping out. She lives some kilometers away from Adaklu Waya, the capital of the Adaklu district. Her admission at the Adaklu Senior High School has saved her education. Her condition has not deterred her from helping her family. I met her at home, doing house chores, despite her disability. Her condition is bad. I want people to help me to, for my sickness to be done for me, and I can, and I can concentrate on my book and learn how to become my next, my future. If I sit down for a long period, I feel pains. So, if I'm learning small, then I'll pack the books and rest. Sometimes I put my head on the table to sleep small before starts again. She can hardly sleep well at night. Doctors at the Focus Orthopedic Hospital in Accra say she needs 95,000 CDs to undergo surgery. Her family can't afford it. They are peasant farmers. Some group, Lablulu uh, Education Trust Fund, they came and donated something, and then Adaklu platform, they also came and donated something, but still we didn't reach a year. So I'm um, begging the people to help us. Bubbly and hard working at school, she has many friends who support her. She can't do a lot of things on her own. A brilliant student, learning is a difficulty due to this. The school didn't want to admit her to the boarding house due to her condition. Dennis, um, what do you know about this topic, self-identity? Self-identity is the state of a complete talent, social and... Yeah, you're on course. I think she's not fit as such at this moment to be in the boarding house because she cannot fetch water on her own, go to the bathhouse, carry the water and go and bath, wash her things. Even at the dining hall, the rate at which she can eat is rather different from what the friends can do. She struggles to sit through lessons. She was admitted because the school felt she could do better and develop herself. According to school authorities, she's responding. She's able to mingle with her friends and she's doing quite well. What is needed is to put her in a classroom that is convenient. The chair on which she sits at the moment is not convenient. She's unable to sit for long hours and she had to get up and squat throughout lessons in order to complete the day. 
teachers are saying that Bernice is a brilliant student and she needs all the support to be able to complete her education. Surgery at a cost of 95,000 cities will enable her live a normal life and complete school. Though she takes part in school activities, it is with difficulty due to her condition and she easily gets tired. Bernice needs help. Doctors say she can live a normal life if the money is raised. Her family appeals to individuals and organizations to come to her aid. Contact the Three Foundation if you want to help Benis. Help save Benis's education. We are still in the festive season. Your contributions are welcome. Let's help in the little way that we can so we put a smile on Benny's face and for her to complete her education. On to other news. And Arusha Ghana has captured some pictures of Kalamse operations at Etiwa Forest. And TV3 has secured exclusive photos and videos of some illegal miners operating in the heart of the Etiwa Forest. The pictures, which were taken with a hidden camera by Environmental Civil Society Group Arusha Ghana, captured some illegal miners busily working. Some are also pictured resting in what appears to be a makeshift tent providing shelter for them. These illegal miners, according to the civil society group, operate under the cover of darkness and at the blind side of the Operation Vanguard team. The pictures were taken with a hidden camera by environmental civil society group Arocha Ghana. This comes after some 14 illegal miners operating on the Ofin River at Manso Keniago in the Amancio West District of the Ashanti region were arrested by a combined team of the Ghana National Association of Small-Scale Miners, the Amancio West District Assembly's Tax Force, and the police. The Etiwa Forest currently serves as a source for three rivers, namely the Densu, Brim, and Ayensu, which supplies the Wager Water Dam in Accra and serves over 5 million of Ghana's population with drinking water. Already, concerns have been raised by some civil society groups that mining the bauxite in the Etiwa forest might be detrimental to the forest reserve and also affect water bodies in the area. Government has clarified that the Etiwa forest might not be considered for bauxite exploration and even if it is, this could be done without destroying the reserve, a statement which civil society groups have disputed. The group is calling on government to intensify its operations in and around the Etiwa forest area to clamp down on what it described as a continuous destruction of resources in the forest. And now to the health sector, where some patients at the Accra Psychiatric Hospital have begun relapsing, uh, posing a threat to health workers due to lack of medications. As of Tuesday, December 26th, not even a pack of paracetamol was in stock. Peter Kwa had to report nurses have had to rush to nearby pharmacies for medication in response to emergency cases. For many years, the Accra Psychiatric Hospital has been in the news for varied reasons ranging from shortage of food items and congestion. Poor infrastructure, lack of medicals and staff conditions of service have become prominent. The situation became worse in 2017, prompting a number of industrial actions. Patients and staff continue to go through challenges, albeit in the quiet. First is the lack of medication. Since the collapse of the central medical stores in 2015, the hospital has been on erratic supply of medicals. Officials say the situation sometimes gets out of hand, resulting in patients relapsing and becoming a threat to staff. And we have another type of medication we call psychotropic drugs. That one is acute shortage. And now it's making the patients to be uh, agitated and restless and aggressive. Sometimes those nurses on duty, they do beat them because there is no medication for them. Prior to the donation of these few boxes of paracetamol and brufen from step by step on Tuesday, December 26, the drugstore was empty. Because as at now, the hospital, we don't have paracetamol at our dispensary. No paracetamol. So if patient is physically sick, the hospital buy the drugs for that particular patient. But this one, I think it will help us to solve at least 
small problem we are facing on uh, patient medication. Of much concern to the medical staff is the state of the infrastructure. Commissioned in 1906, the Accra Psychiatric Hospital has not received any major renovation. The roofs are weak as other metal fittings have become rusty. Doors to most of the rooms are damaged or completely removed, resulting in frequent escape at night. We also appeal to those who can help us to renovate some of the walls. Because as you can see, they will sleep at midnight, they will climb the wall and abscond. The Vice President, Dr. Alhaji Mahmoud Baumia, during the 2017 Edo Fetu, promised to ensure the renovation of the main male ward, but this is yet to materialize. Church groups like the West Volta Presbytery Women Fellowship have stepped in to help. Every year we try to do something because you don't know who will come here. You may be one of them. So every year, as much as we can, we try to renovate the place, make it comfortable for the patients. Another major challenge in the hospital is access to water. The entire facility relies on ball holes, which is inadequate. This one, constructed by the late Professor Arthur Mills, is yet to be connected to the system. This one, too, has stopped functioning for many years. Patients have had to fetch from available ones donated by philanthropists. I am appealing to all Ghanaians who can to give to this type of people. There is nobody who will help them, unless we, the outside people, who can help them. On 26 December, a number of groups joined the West Volta Presbytery Women Fellowship, which has adopted a female observation ward to present assorted items to the inmate as part of their annual rituals. Many naturally give out give during festive seasons, and the Christmas season and demand for hampers have come to stay. In spite of efforts to encourage Ghanaians to patronize goods produced locally, most of the hampers on sale contain imported products. Selomanya reports vendors attribute this to the demand for only quality goods. Most gift shops begin the stocking of hampers as Christmas approaches. Hampers have become the best choice for many as it contains carefully selected assorted products. But how many of these are made in Ghana? Hampers have resurfaced again as the U-Tide is here with us. However, local content is missing as majority of these products and gifts are imported. This is in a sharp contrast to the campaign for all to patronize made in Ghana goods. A lot of goodies from rice, chocolate, sweet, tea, wine and spirit to confectionaries are being packed. Although some shops stock the hampers based on the order placed, others stock them looking at the demand for the product. The price of the hamper ranges from 100 cities to 400 cities. Retan Puma Seidu is the owner of the Obiba Supreno Enterprise, also known as Alabama Atusu. She is busily stocking up hampers on Boxing Day and says the imported product sell faster. The rice, whiskey and other confectionaries are not made in Ghana, but the basket is. I am also a Ghanaian that brings a balance, but Ghanaians patronize the hampers more than foreigners. Rita also reveals that some individuals bring in their own products to be stocked for them, and some of them include made in Ghana products. Some purchase African wares and others buying hampers for their parents come along with made in Ghana textiles and clothes. Jessica and her sisters are helping their mom stock up hampers. Over here, one might find one or two made in Ghana products in the hamper. Jessica explained some customers do not consider the content but the size and price. According to her, Demand for imported products is high compared to Ghana-made products. Most of the products here are imported products. Just a few of them are made in Ghana goods. Mm, this is because the demand is very high. The demand for the imported products are very high. Choosing a Christmas hamper often comes down to one's recipient and their personal preferences. It is obvious government efforts need to be scaled up if the campaign for the promotion of made in Ghana goods and services would be successful. 
On to other news, Sam Kane Weavers in Accra have called on government to rejuvenate the cane factory at Achim Inuesi in the eastern region to help reduce unemployment rates in the country. According to them, business has been good this year as compared to previous years, selling over 500 woven baskets and anticipate to sell even more as the year wraps up. The switchback road near Cantonments is one of the cane weaving hubs in Accra. Here, a cluster of carpenters, weavers and craftsmen produce various artworks using cane and other local materials. Woven baskets and boxes come in various sizes and designs, and the prices range from 5 to 50 cities, depending on the material used and the quality. Head of a cane weaving group, Kweku Ofori, and his apprentice weavers were busy on Tuesday morning, eagerly weaving more baskets to cash in during the festive period and beyond. He told the news team, business has been very good this year. I have sold over 1,000 baskets this period. Another cane weaver who has been in the business for over 20 years, Kwesi Owusu, shared similar sentiments. We have sold all our baskets, but the past government's directive which banned the sharing of hampers among public sector workers should be relooked to boost our business. The cane weavers, whilst lauding the one district, one factory policy, called on government to support the people of Achimen UAC by rejuvenating the cane weaving factory. I am pleading with government to revamp the cane weaving factory at Achimen UAC because the cane weaving business is very lucrative. That's it by way of news this morning. Many thanks for making time with us. For more news updates, log on to our website, 3 And birthday wishes are in order to our lead cameraman, Boy Frikoni. Enjoy the rest of the day. And over to you, African Youth Choir.
oh. and youth choir and they'll be here with us throughout the show so certainly don't mm. change that dial mm. if you want to hear more of their danceable tunes this morning mm. and of course they've ushered us to glorify god i don't know what you've had during this festive season but whatever it is just remember to give god thanks because the fact that you're alive alone mm. is a gift right. that alone is a gift and you should be grateful to exactly god. i mean anytime it's from simpa it got mm. to be good oh, uh, and yeah. uh, if you Go back and talk about uh, the likes of uh, John uh, Aqua Harrison mm. and, the, and the people from there. Chora music is always exciting when it's from Winneba. The yeah. African, the, the African youth choirs from Winneba, a great one there. And I'm sure uh, if you're watching and you want to have them, um, uh, get to TV. It will get you uh, mm. via uh, contact. But Certainly. grateful for your time with us. Uh, I must say there is more, but well, <laughs> that's a promise. There's more coming up on the show. But now, time to talk about what you've been talking about ranting yes we're ranting and we're asking the simple question mm. what has been the best month for you in the year 2017 which is just about fading away certainly for me it's my birth month everyone knows that in it's march the best month you can get in 2017 but mm. of course you may have your reasons for choosing your best month in 2017 mm. and we certainly do hope it was a good reason for choosing that right what is yours <sighs> well I, all the I, I i think that december is always a great mm. month i mean despite the fact that you were born in march december <laughs> is always a great month Man. Uh, a lot of uh, activities, mm. uh, you get to see people, you get to know people. And uh, for me, December is such a wonderful month, particularly when uh, that man was born in the month of December, that man who saved uh, you and me. Uh, certainly, that's a month that mm. I, I think is great. Mm. It's a great month. Anyway, so that's what we think, but what do you also think out there mm. as you rant with George Queen in this morning? We are about to wrap it up the year 2017 and just a few days away to end the year in ground style. And for me, it's been a roller coaster, ups and downs, good, bad and ugly. But all through all, it's been great because everything they say happens for a reason. I've got this lady friend who had issues with fertility and in the month of July, she gave birth to triplets as it is a miracle. And so that month will pass as my best month. Let us know what month will also pass as your best month in the year 2017. Welcome to Daily Rant. So what's your best month in the year 2017? I'll go for October. What really happened? Um, I decided it being my best month. Um, I won an award in October. What award is that? Fill us in. <laughs> oh, okay, so apparently I'm a blogger oh, for a team called GH Informed. And then um, there was this award scheme, Teen Choice Awards. And then I won Best um, Choice Award, Best Teen Award. Blogger, blog of the year. Okay, so, congratulations. So, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, I think um, that will probably be my best month of the year. Okay. What about your best month? April. Because um, I was born on April, like, I was born in April year, and then I just feel April was the best month for me because comparing April to other months, and I had lots of stuff in April, like, yeah. Okay, even though December has not ended, most people think it's the best one because at the time our savior jesus christ was born but i'm really surprised why you guys would want to choose your birth month at your best um i think you were making an assertion about a friend of yours who was yeah. um, so i think once you are born to celebrate life it's, it's, it's probably the best because as you said most people go for december because it's the birth month of our lord and personal savior and so i think aside that your your month or when you also you know, came into the world should be of importance to you so that's why i'll probably go for october december is like somewhere a festival season where people celebrate and i don't see it that much compared to my month because my month i had something really serious in my month so i choose my month that's why which month will pass as your best in 2017 um december why why december oh because december is um like a happy Month we we get close to each other with families. Close to each other, I don't get life. it. Can you please? Um, we we have fun with relatives and then yeah, and then friends. We get together with families, then to like to be happy. I can see you are the chilling type. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like chilling. I like chilling, but uh, I don't go out every day. So where are you going to now? Um. I just visited, I visited my brother, so we are just moving around. Which month will pass as your best in 2017? 
I'll be in January. What really happened? I registered this car. I, even though I bought it last year, I registered this car. Uh, it is more like your baby. Yeah, my baby. <laughs> yeah, this is a car I've been dreaming to dro ride. Even On that CRV? 2014, yes. Uh, even though I'm hoping to buy a better one. Like a Bentley Range Rover? <laughs> no, Mercedes. <laughs> okay, that, that's a classic car, yeah. So, Mercedes. Uh, so all the best. Really, it, it cuts across the year. I can't really point out a particular month. It's been wonderful. The month of December has been very wonderful. Um, between November and this month, December has been very wonderful when um, we were deploying a new system in the office and the deployment went so smoothly and successful. And I'm just excited about the way my entire staff have embraced the project and it's been good. For me, my best month was this December or is this December because I'm actually coming from Germany and I'm here for holiday. Like we're going home and celebrating and it's going to be the best month in this year. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's also the, the, the birth of Christ as well. I guess yes, because yeah. it's Christmas time, yeah. right? So yeah. So are you enjoying yourself? How, how, is, how is the feeling like here in Ghana? The feeling is wonderful. It's amazing. The weather is good, the food is good, the people are amazing. So <laughs> everything is nice. Okay. Yeah. Everything is cool. August. Then it's here. Oh, Minya, never be brave for me. Minya, contract August. Yeah. Now, for once, we will be brave if you are rich, but I'm not more here. Then you enjoy it. Let me see my whisker. I know what I want be. Oh, Scott, there's another one. You tell me if you're inside the bank, they are the over and quant the over at home. They're quite here, Pog, so chill here. Oh, I want it. Now, boss, who did it? I mean, August now. It's August in Mono. Now I know I've been quite here, man. So, no, I mean, I mean, so. If you say, like, I know I'm not missing the card, the baby. And so, no, you're going to August in the side, come and I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Now, what year? I mean, then it's September. Then it's here. Oh, I do, me, I really, but I'm going to go to the summit in the month. I'm so happy for that month. I hope so. Oma nyame ebe di bibia wa sete we na you able to go to church continuously. Eh hon dia me ko church me me never be me fan say yes eh good pa. And I say bia ohun to no ko asori Sunday na afi the one ko biom. Me ko but I say my son I will say kra but Mr. T eh say Mr. T na me say ko. Which month will pass as the best in 2017 for you? Um I guess. What really happened? Okay, because that was the time I really made the best sales. Mm. What do you sell? Okay, I do natural fruit juice. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I sell it to companies. Mm. So that was the time I really had, like, my pick. I really had my So best you raked in more revenue. Are you ready to share some with me, your money? Come again. Are you ready to share some of your money with me? No. Why? <laughs> it's a month of Christmas. Like, ma month of, you know. I'm not ready to share my money with you. <laughs> See, so which one is your best month? Um, December. What happened? Um, I had a promotion at work and uh, I also bought a new car. Hey, Charlie, so from here, are you going to, you know, drop me at my office? Sure, why not? I'm happy for I'm you. Happy. Passing through um, TV3. Mm. So I'll give you a lift. Me uh, first in November. Then you see November. Uh, of course, uh, November, no, uh, my birthday uh, is November. No, in ten years, the best, you uh, bosom my mom. Because my team, my uncle, for me, I have me so fit January, sir, be doing November. Now I sit down and be man. Intimid, then I had the best, eh, mommy. Intimid, November, then oh yeah, oh yeah, party. Oh man, yeah, party. You see, birthday, no, it's not about party, party. So what time you go? Sorry, God, I'm not me. I say na, when you go, you go, but you be no more. No, so yeah, party. Intimid, yes, I go to party. Kesi, I na chase what the birthday, and I say when the birthday. Two years and seven months ago, when I left my hometown, walking. Since I've been walking down through Europe and Africa uh, on my way to Tanzania and the, the concept is that the, the journey itself provides a lot of media attention mm -hmm. and then I try to use this media attention to get in touch with companies okay. who want to sponsor money for water supply systems here in Africa because there is a, a global water crisis. Actually the UN um, Proposed that about a uh, thousand children are dying every day because okay. of uh, unclean water. Okay, let, let, let me ask this question. When you walk and it's dark, yeah. it's in the night, where do you sleep? Well, mostly uh, I, I try to camp before the sun goes down. So about 
6, 7 o'clock, I go into the bush, find a place where I'm not visible from the road, and then I put up my hammock. I've, I've been on the road now for two and a half years. I've never been paying to sleep. Okay. Sometimes I sleep with locals, but most of the time I'm, I'm camping in, uh, in the bush. So have you had any encounters with wild animals, reptiles? Not really, not okay. yet. Okay. <laughs> so the question is, which month in 2017 will pass as your best month? Hmm. Well, actually, I think it must be two months ago, October, because we, we got a sponsor for, for two water systems, oh, a uh, system in Sierra Leone and one in Liberia. Mm. And that is, the, that is the first time I, I actually get a sponsor to, to finish some, some projects. Oh, so I'm very happy about that, of course, starting to see some result. Okay. But the main project is in Tanzania. I was staying in a village in Tanzania in 2013 where about 8,000 people uh, have to walk uh, 18 kilometers to get, uh, no, 19 kilometers it's to the water. nearest water source and home again. Mm -hmm. So that's the big flagship project, but it, it costs a lot of money and I still don't have a head sponsor for that. And I'm trying uh, now to, to make minor projects in, in the countries I visit. This television station has got wider coverage. People are watching, YouTubers are watching. Okay. And so you might get a sponsorship, trust me. That would be great. Yeah, I, it's, I it's, good, it's more like a New Year package for you. So <laughs> yeah. trust me, TV3, we do miracles, you're going to get a sponsor, trust me. That's great. Congratulations as well. Thanks a lot. And so you've had the public on their best month in the year 2017. And most of them chose their best month as their best. And so let's know what yours is as well. Log on to our social media platforms. On Facebook, it's News on TV3. And on Twitter, it's a News TV3. This amazing apparel of mine was given to me by St. Tito. And he can be located at Trasaco in East Legon. Just go there and you get yourself amazing apparels for any occasion. Thanks for watching. What are we talking about today? Okay, today I want to talk about the state of the economy. Yeah. State of the economy. Yeah. All right, peeps. So join him <laughs> and I on this show, <laughs> the rant, a new day. Daily rant. New Daily day. rant. TV I got it right. <laughs> Daily rant. New day. Okay. On TVC three. Yeah. TV3. yeah. On TV three. <laughs> You are not nice. <laughs> on TV3. <laughs> Join us on this show, Daily Rant, today on TV3. Yeah. We rock. Yeah. Right. <laughs>right welcome back to the show and the newspapers are ready uh are online it's also uh, ready all of them ready but today i have the today newspaper here and it starts the morning and says that president inspires Ghanaian says there are brighter days ahead that's on the front page and then robbers attack sda church during a uh, night service uh, fire guards uh, story building and uh, a story uh, We'll take a look at some of the stories in the today newspaper and uh, particularly uh, those that uh, were captured in the course of the uh, Christmas festivities. If you go to page uh, 14, page 12, 68 police officers get uh, promotion. But let's take a break. When we come back, uh, I'll let you in on what's on the newspapers. my Vodafone app. Click on Yen Yagra, play and win every day.
This Christmas, the biggest gathering of society's most influential. Friday, 29th December, Banquet Hall State House. The 2017 Musical Presidential Ball. His Excellency the President, Nana Adudankwe Kufuado, and other key patrons, the Musicians Union of Ghana, presents the 2017 Musical Presidential Grand Ball and exclusive dinner under the theme, Think Ghana, Sing Ghana, Dance Ghana, Patronizing Ghana for Accelerated Development. Friday, the 29th of December, 8 p.m. at the State Banquet Hall State House, Accra. Come, let's support the Aging Musicians Welfare Fund and Music Academy. Quality dining, good comedy, auction of vintage music instruments, plus out of the world performances. Daddy Lumba, Freddie Mayway, Becca, Wuta, Joe Metal, Ebony, and DKB. Very limited seats available. Call 0207 572 844 or 0244 802 007 for reservations. Presidential Grand Ball is brought to you by Musica and supported by National Investment Bank, Casa Preto Lomo Betes, Kempinski Hotel, Media General, Peace FM, EIB Network, Safari Valley, the 2017 New Right, and let me tell you who my guests are this morning. Uh, Nana uh, Damwa is a member of the NPP's communication team and he's here with me. Nana, good morning. Good morning, Chief. And how, uh, how is your Christmas? Well, good. Uh, by the grace of God, it was good. It was good. Great. It was, good. It, was, it, was a, it was enough time to spend a little bit more time with the family, mm. uh, a little bit of time to depart away from the normal routines and then actually That's have right. some time to spend the, at home. <laughs> the very stressful routine, I guess. Yeah. yeah All yeah. right. We're grateful for your time with us Thank this you. morning. And a member of parliament for the Zabziku constituency, a member of the NDC, Honorable Alassan Duma is also here. Good morning, too. Good morning. Uh, and I hope right. you're doing good. Very uh, well. And you joined the Christian world to enjoy Christmas, I guess. Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I enjoy the rest and uh, at least uh, waking up very early morning to go to Parliament has okay. been, uh, been <laughs> Quite a, a big relief. Uh. <laughs> All right. Grateful for your time with us. Now, let's begin with this story on page three of the Today newspaper. The president uh, um, said that uh, there are brighter days ahead for all Ghanaians as Ghana joined the, the world to mark uh, or to celebrate Christmas, even though he was aware of the challenges uh, that had plagued Ghanaians over the past 11 months under his tenure. The president said he will devote his energy towards creating a free and prosperous nation for all. He says, I'm aware of the many challenges that confronted Ghanaians this year. We should not see the economic difficulties of, our, of today as the blueprint of our tomorrow. There are brighter days ahead. We should continue to stay united and focus on the things that can help us construct the road to our brighter future. The president said in his Christmas message, and um, that's uh, from the president. Now, now, let me start from here. The, the, the president has acknowledged uh, challenges that uh, he had had to uh, try and um, deal with in the past uh, 11 uh, months. He's promising a brighter future. How, how bright can the, the future be? When Ghana gained independence in about 1957, we, we had a lot of hope within ourselves. We felt that the black man could govern himself to the best of circumstances and that we had within ourselves that ability to take ourselves to wherever it is that we wanted to go. I think that along the line, several things happened. We've had several challenges. We have made modest progress and we need to admit that we have made modest progress, right. but we could have done better perhaps with all the resources that we had at our disposal. But I believe that in the presidency of His Excellency, Nanado Danko Akufado, we have another chance to reclaim that, 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 that dream, we have another chance to reclaim that glory, we have another chance to set ourselves aright. What has happened over the last 11 months is phenomenal. It does not mean, and I'm always very quick to add, it does not mean that all our problems as a country have been solved. That's not true. Anybody who says that Ghana today is a paradise is, is plain flat out lying. It's not true. There are still challenges all over the country. But we have made modest progress, and we need to admit that. In, 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 in the area of electrification, for instance, when you look at the Dumso situation, it has greatly improved, as, 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 as what we used to have. When you look at our, the deficit, mm -hmm. our debt-to-GDP ratio, among others, all of these things have improved. I will go back to an example that I love using because I consider it to be a very sincere appreciation of the times in which we live, which was the admission by the Vodafone CEO that at least now they can plan and their plans can carry through. Mm -hmm. So all of these are quite you know, interesting times in which we live. 
we came into government to come and meet some challenges, of course. I'm not seeking to say that the challenges that we met um, were, were whatever. But what we are trying to say is that as a government, when we came into, in, in, into the governance of this country, we came to meet challenges and we came to meet some moderate uh, benefits as well. He, we took over all of these things. And as president of the country, the president was bold enough to say, look, I came to meet a situation that I wish was better than it is. But my role is not to complain. My role is to fix those challenges. And in 11 months, we've His done... critics have said that he doesn't seem to be fixing these challenges. And he's always uh, just talking about them. You see, that's what the critics will say. Particularly in the critics, we need to acknowledge the loudest of them have been political opposition, which is logical. Because you'll expect that so long as you continue to be there, politics in this country mm. being the zero-sum game that we know it, it, it to could be. be but a, a plus for instance is a member of your party and in the today newspaper he says that nanado is delaying and that he he's always saying that uh, we should hold on uh, and wait for uh, the good things ahead he th he feels that uh, nana should act now well you see at the beginning of, of the year as well, I remember there were, there were several interventions that this president started laying out. And the same critics were saying that, look, slow down a little bit, because if you do not, we cannot sustain it. Till today, the arguments about free SHS and the sustainability of free SHS, there were some who are still saying that perhaps we should have slowed down and waited to implement it in later years. Mm -hmm. I also know that the tax, um, the tax uh, cuts that were done in the earlier part of the years, the minority held the opinion that we shouldn't have done them. And in the preparation of the 2018 budget, for instance, they said we should perhaps reintroduce some of the old taxes that we are taking off, among others. So it's an issue of, you know, opinions. And opinions, as you know, do change from time to time. What is critical is that we can all begin to see the benefits of some of these things as the years go by. And currently, look, free SHS, it was a huge thing. It has been implemented. Yes, there are challenges. And nobody can run away from the fact that there are challenges and there will continue to be challenges. Mm. But what this government has done is we've implemented the, pro the, 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 the procedure. We've implemented the, 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 the thing to give a little bit of breathing room to all parents. There are challenges. We will continue to address those challenges. This In the 2018 budget, we have rolled out what is called the Akufado Plan for Economic Transformation. And that Akufado Plan for Economic Transformation spells out clearly what it says that the government will seek to do to ensure that we transform the economy as we have always been speaking about. We go back to our original idea, which is that this economy has been Gorgesbeck since 1925. Mm. His Excellency Nana Dudanko Akufado has stated clearly that he wants to spend his time as president to transform the economy of this country. Why? Because the current state of the economy is constricted. We cannot have enough jobs the way the economy is. We cannot realize the development that we want to realize the way the economy is currently. Mm. So we need to change it. So if you are coming to power here, spend the first one year trying to stabilize certain indices, trying to stabilize the macroeconomic situation, put in place key things. We acknowledge the fact that not enough jobs have been, have been created, and that is a huge challenge. We acknowledge the fact that not in, enough relief is within the economy, and we are going to address that in the coming years. Right. The economic transformation, bear in mind, will not take one year. It will not take two years. It will mm. take a period of time, about right. six to seven or ten years. Mm. But at least... What we are doing is we are bold enough to take those difficult, hard decisions that will ensure that we achieve what it is that we want. At the beginning of the Wrap year, up for me. at the beginning of the year, we took a decision to cap funds that were going to the uh, district assembly common funds. It was a huge issue in this country. Issues of illegality, among others, were raised. But we addressed that matter because when you looked at the budget of this country, it was becoming statutory funds were becoming quite a drain. On, a, on the power of the states to be able to implement certain interventions. It was a difficult decision, yes, but we have done it. And because of that, we've been able to create some physical room for some of these changes to be done. We will continue to make some of these difficult decisions to ensure that in the long run, the Ghanaian will see the benefits of being Ghanaian. I'm grateful. And I, I saw the smile on Honorable Umar's face when you were talking. Uh, <laughs> does it suggest that, indeed, you... You, you're beginning to see the, the brighter future the president is promising. Well, um, let me first of all uh, say good morning to your cherished listeners mm. and to the good people of Zabsugu constituency. Um, and good morning, my good friend. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, uh, yes, we, must be, we, we should be hopeful. Uh, but in being hopeful doesn't mean that... Uh, 
the president has done well. Uh, my good friend knows that when the president Nana Kufado took the uh, swear, took the oath, he pledged that he was going to protect the public purse. And what did we see? Immediately after turning, you know, coming down from the restroom to the office, we saw an expanded government machinery, which we will refer to elephant government. 110 ministers. There's no country in this world that has such a huge number. Then he promised he was going to do one dam, one village. To date, not a single dugout in this country has been done. He promised to do one district, one factory. To date, none, even if they have one, is just going to be a building that they have repainted and renamed. What do we see? We just continue to see cliches and the inauguration and launchings of uh, uh, slogans. Then we talk about, you talked about electricity. Yeah, thanks the Mahama administration that the president, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, promised to Ghanaians, made a promise that he will end Dumso, and he did. He did? He did. And these are the dividends that your government is... Yeah, these are the dividends that the MPP government has come to benefit. They came, the, 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 the MPP yeah. is suggesting that they ended them so. It, How it, did it, they end them so? Yes, How did I, they end I, them I, so? Is it by talking? When, yes. when is it by talking should that I ended them so? Should I explain? No, 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 no. It's not. Then, uh, you know, and so... Then he talked about ending corruption. And I can vouch, the last city I have in my pocket, that in the history of Ghana, no government has had these scandals in this first year than Nana Kufado government. Which one? The allegation. The allegation? Oh, well, are there no scandals? No. When we had the buzz right, let's, let's, you know, let's, we had scandals let, too, but let's it wasn't describe them as allegations. Okay, move allegations. Move right, allegations. Allegations. You can talk about all the bust. What the? Huh? The uh, five million contamination, the contaminated oil. You can talk about it. Nothing happened. And, uh, you know, number of those. Then recently you have a website building of, uh, uh, you know, the unnecessary ministry that was created, which is going to siphon 300 million Ghana cities for nothing. You don't think we should blame the minority for, How do you for, for, for not, for not, um, perhaps, okay. if that was the way out, staging a walkout in protest of that uh, budget of that ministry? Oh, oh, no, 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 the minority would not stage a walkout. There are, there are several uh, instances no, that the minority, not only the, the, well, the NDC this minority number, but uh, minority parties have staged walkouts on certain things. Yeah, if it is clear that the ministry is using 800,000 cities or even 80,000 cities to build a website, uh, no, 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 you know, minority have walked okay, out let, let me take you, in, in practice? let me take you back for, you know, uh, based on the Constitution, the Minister of Finance prepare his budget, bring us to the Parliament, bring us to Parliament, mm. and Parliament approve it before he can spend. Then the Minister of Finance and Government also takes another responsibility after mid-term, six months down the line yeah. to review and also come back to parliament and say look the budget pr projections we made we will need to make certain adjustment either downward or upward mm -hmm. then the parliament again approves that review approves that before they go and do it now when minister of finance brought his first budget we approve it it was supposed to give us a review 
and they did uh, what is called kangaroo laying. Instead of them putting, giving us the budget, you know, the budget review, uh, uh, the minister to lay it for at least 48 hours for us to debate. The minister uh, came to parliament as going to issue a statement. You're talking about the, the review in, in November. The, the review came as a statement. The minority leader argues against it. And the majority said no. It was just a statement. So you can't debate So it. we could not debate it. And they, they, you know, he wrote his statement. What did we see? So that is why, and that, is why the man, uh, that is why we abstain in the voting for the budget. Because when they brought it, we thought that it was illegal. There were some illegalities that we needed to straighten. It was only after they laid the budget and they brought the appropriation bills that the breakdown gave us all these anomalies and irregularities and over pardon of ministerial uh, uh, budgets. And so if you say that, uh, uh, yes, who is not hopeful? We must all be hopeful. Even the dead person is hopeful. Even the dead person is hopeful because he's thinking to go to where? He was he is thinking <laughs> to go to heaven. <laughs> I see. <laughs> and, what do, what, yeah, and today, as we speak, security is an issue. Just yesterday, two days ago, on Christmas Day, a colleague for hours, uh, Eric Opoku, Honorable Eric Opoku, mm -hmm. celebrating Christmas and his home, he was attacked in Akufado country, broad daylight, and today nobody knows who attacked him. Hmm. We are all not secured. Then we talk about, I have, I'm yet, I don't know, maybe it is silly, uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah time, that we could have named some kind of brigade after Nkrumah. Did you hear him? Akufado, what? What is the term again? Plan for economic transformation. Is he going to use his pocket money <laughs> for that? Term? <laughs> to come on, you are using taxpayers' it. money and you are naming it after yourself. So is it name? What is it? Are we in a communist country? Uh, uh, what is name? Are we in a communist <laughs> country? What is in the name? Okay. Are we in a communist country? Where are we going? Where, where is the country going? Then you talk about uh, the best economic management team but is honorable. coming. Uh, let me finish. I'm coming. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to, to you. The I'm best economy management he, he, team is coming. Up. When we were leaving office, I think the dollar was not up to four cities. No. It was in excess of four cities. Today, where is it? It's uh, around four cities. Four around, cities. around four cities what? Well, it's almost five cities. Yes, but... You're, it's almost five yes. cities. Right. Today, you can sit here and say the economy is good, but ask the ordinary Ghanaian. Go to the market. We do. Today... You can't even, your, your vice president, mm -hmm. he can't even go. He, He's he, a vice president the of the vice Republic president of went to Medina, Ma, uh, where? Is it Nima Market and stuff? It, it you was at the Medina Market. At the Medina Market. Today he can't do that. Why? Uh, he should go and tell, tell us the prices of items <laughs> since we left power. I don't know my wrap up for me. So. <laughs> Let me get a reaction from Nana. And yes. We should be hopeful. But Nana has to review and rethink and reshuffle and also do what shrink his government one thing i missed is about get fund the get fund when you talk about uh, uh, free shs free shs mm. it's get fund that's why you have buildings that are not completed the government goes to get fund and take a chunk of money 400 million to come and fund free HHS. Oh, that's hmm. what, that, that's yes. an, is that an allegation yes. you are making? it's not an allegation. The, the government goes to uh, 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 the, um, this uh, NHI. The NHI? NHI, and takes money to go out and fund what? Uh, Nelson. I see. Uh, and I, is, that, is that the source of the money for the nursing training allowance? And I, the, I and would the want to allowance? address all of these. You know, of, you know and, then, and, 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 and then when we're in power, Akufado and NPP, they were trumpeting.
that day. NHI is dead. NHI is dead. Today, most hospitals have not received their payment over 12 months now. You are sure about that? Yes, I'm That's sure about true. that. We'll, 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 we'll find out. I can speak on authority. On that authority, what? That is not true. Are you sure? I am 100% Which sure. Which 12? We'll, we'll find out. My producers will quickly work it out. No, 12 months, uh, you're suggesting uh, you uh, service providers right. have not right. yet been I can been tell paid. you for a fact. Okay, if it's wrapped up, you, you can... What you I can, can tell you for a fact on this allegation of NHS is mm. that what we have been doing is that the expenditures that have been coming in for this kind of government um, expenditures during the NHS is being paid. What we are clearing in bits is the arrest that was left by the NDC government. Okay, so now let's deal so, with. So, so how, how many months are in arrest? How many months? He are said in twelve arrest? months. No, it's, 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 it's not. It, no, it's it not twelve be, months. It will not be a It will not be a maximum of two months. Okay, that is. Listen, NHI, NHI, I agree. Quarterly, so you no can't problem. say it's two months. Uh, uh, no problem. NHI, I think. I think no, no, I think he has a point there. I think NHIS payment is not quarterly. The point I'm making is that December hasn't ended. Okay. That's why I'm saying two months because right. December hasn't ended. My producer has worked. Now let's face the facts, mm. okay? The NDC, and I've always said that the he raised issues of corruption, his electricity, and security, and says that these things are with not in perfect shape. Security. An attack happened on an MP, and so Ghana is insecure. An MP no, was he's not referring to. He says that it's been. People but the example he house. gave was you that know? an MP was attacked in broad daylight during Christmas period. Mm. That was the example he gave, right. and he uses that to say we are not secured. An MP was murdered. I Do, oh, can I can I please finish? An MP was murdered during the NDC region. Till today, mm. we haven't gotten to the end of that matter. That was not insecurity. But but the case is in See, court. The judges I, I agree. The case yeah. is in court. Delta no problem. When, when, if, if you'd allow me yeah. to land on a woman, when, when, when these matters happened, when did this attack happen? Two or three days ago? You are here saying that that is a sign of insecurity. It's been over a year when an MP was murdered. During your tenure, has, we never has this government handled issues of Delta Force invasion? I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. I'll, I'll, get handled to it. Well. I'll get to it. Right. But an MP was murdered during your tenure. Until today, we haven't gotten to the end of that but matter. You did, Nana, you the case not in court. You did, well, so he knows the procedures. Uh -huh. If you pick that case then, that somebody has been attacked and it's, in, it's, it's insecurity, mm. then it exposes a certain measure of insincerity. Okay. You understand me? The problem we have in this country as of now is that we have a group of people who are peeved to be out of power and so are looking for every single opportunity <laughs> to create hyperbolic anecdotes <laughs> and throw it out there. I'll come to the issue of corruption one by one. I like the fact that you pointed it out to him that these are nothing but mere allegations. And in any case, all of these allegations have been substantially, if you feel that anything has been done awkward or outright, mm. that is wrong. Please let us know. We'll deal with it. He mentions the case of Boss. What should have been done in Boss which was not done? That's the question. Because you see, you throw out something. Boss, yes. There was contamination of fuel. It was dealt with in a particular manner. Mm -hmm. It raised issues as to how it was dealt with. It was investigated. We realized that there were lapses in the system. So we put in place certain measures to ensure that those lapses are, you know, checked and that these things do not happen again. Mm -hmm. Till today, the NDC wants to use that as an issue of corruption. What was the corruption in Boston? I'll be very happy. If they're it, able to it, tell it, us that was the the MD right in in, in selling the oil to companies that were not okay, registered the, as said by MP. Now here's the procedure. Mm. During their time, there was a policy. Okay. Any you see when the MD went into office, there was a procedure used for uh, disposing of such things. Mm. That procedure is the same procedure that he followed. Okay. Even though they, they were wrong it's the same procedure. Even though they were wrong, see, wrong it took procedures. It took, it took this government. No, and I'm asking. He <laughs> used it, but I'm asking if he used it even though they were wrong procedures. Now the point I'm because coming the to is that said it was wrong. The point I'm coming to is that it was <laughs> after this incident that the NDP, MPA declared that it was wrong. Okay. All right. You, you get the fact. Yeah, it was yeah. after this incident, mm -hmm. after the MPP government having come into power and having conducted investigations mm -hmm. into this matter, that we discovered that we've been doing the wrong thing all these years. But you sit here and say that it is corruption. How is that corruption? Please tell us. You use the issue of budget estimate. Now, here's my point. Not a single farden has been spent on anything in that budget. That's one. 
critically. You don't think that we should stop corruption instead of uh, no, you see, I'm coming punishing to a point. those who, who I'm involved coming to a point, so let's build up. Because yeah. they are seeking to say that the MPP administration is corrupt, the MPP administration has done far worse things. I don't have a problem. Let's look at the issues one by one. Because, you see, generally, propaganda thrives in an environment where the facts are not clear. So let's look at the facts. One, it's a budget estimate. Right. The budget went to parliament. The minority has members in the finance committee. Their job is to look at these facts and figures and scrutinize it critically. Who are their members on the finance committee? Isaac Adongo is there. Kaysel Atuforsen is there. And other members of their group are there. They all looked at these things and several discussions were had. Bear in mind the fact that if we had not approved the budget before Parliament rises, there would have been issues in 2018, particularly the early part of 2018. Compromises were made. Now you come out and you seek to throw these things out in the public domain as though it is evidence of corruption. Question. What has been spent from these things? That's one. Two. It is even more troublesome. They knowing critically that, look, there are checks and balances within the procurement policies of Ghana. Mm. That will ensure that those amount of money, no matter how bloated, would, could not have been spent. Because if you wanted to go ahead, you would have had to write to public procurement authority mm. to get clearance from them. And they would have indicated, having checked against other such expenditures happening in the public sector, to give you clearance, I'll ask you to reduce the figures among others. So to then use that as an example, it's clearly desperation. Today... What we have is a higher standard. Why am I saying it's a higher standard? Because now we're not looking at monies that have been spent, that are being uh, called corruption. No. Now it has gotten to the point where even budgetary allocations are being looked at and criticized that detailed. So now the transparency has been increased. Corruption can then be stopped. We're looking at a if, higher if, standard. If the minority had time, not flagged this, would it have been known? That's the point I am <laughs> making. That You see... If you remember, the bar's branding was hidden in a, a report from, I think, the, uh, uh, the public... Uh, public interest, interest account. Yes. yes. Now, here's so, my point. So, if the minority had not flagged this, you think it would have been... No? Here's my point. Mm. In the bar's branding scandal, monies were already spent. 3.6 million right. was already spent, mm. appropriated wrongly, mm. because it was reported in such a manner that it looked as though it was spent on oil and gas matters and revenues. They spent the money and they sought to hide it. That's what you call corruption. In this instance, the, the budget was brought openly to everybody. Nobody sought to hide any detail anywhere. Okay. And the persons who hid the use of our oil money are today accusing a government that has been open enough to bring these details to the fore. And today, we are all having this discussion. They are the ones who are accusing that government of corruption. Yeah. I don't understand how that yeah. works. Yeah. On the issue of electricity, if I may, if I may, on the issue of electricity, look, the fact that you have generation capacity doesn't mean that all of them are generating. Okay. The critical thing. So what the are, reason what, why? What did you? What did this <laughs> government add to resolve? Do you remember the, that we raised the, we raised the, the issue. Was still there. We raised the issue that the problem with Ghana's electricity was not about generation capacity, but it was financial. Remember. Okay. The current minister made those those allegations mm. back then. And so when we came, what we have done is that we have ensured that we solve that financial situation. Okay. So the Part, the plants now have fuel to actually produce electricity. Right. They went ahead and signed so many power purchase agreements that now we've had to relook all of them. Currently, some of the difficulties we are having is such that some of these plants are there, whether they produce electricity or not. As a country, we have to pay them uh, capacity charges. So whether they produce or not, you and I, our electricity costs involve the charges that we are paying some of these companies. Mm. All of these are arrangements that were made by the NDC government. And today, they are here saying they solved them. So how did this, why we weren't in this country? We couldn't see, we can't remember. Mm. The other side of all of this is that, look, when it comes to the issue of arrears and that we are not paying arrears among other things, it's interesting. Where did the arrears come from? Uh, I've just seen, sorry, I've just seen one here. Uh, we're told that in August, the NPP paid half of the debt of the National uh, Health Insurance Scheme with a promise to pay the other half within 12 months. But as of May, uh, only one out of the 12 months uh, had been paid. That's what our, our team found out. Well, mm. like I'm saying, mm. if you, I, I have done some work with the NHIS recently, mm. and I can tell you what the details of and the I'm, factor. Can I'm, I? Can I? Can I'm, I? Can I'm, I? A, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a member of the health committee, okay. and I'm stating. So, I'm, so no. you are lying. I, I, I have he's, more facts on he's, health. He's, he's, he's wrapping up. You don't. But the fact no, I'm no, trying, the, the, the point I'm trying to make critically is that on the issue of arrears, now you leave such gargantuan arrears in the country. Cocoa roads, 
You are given permission to spend about one point something billion on cocoa roads. You are awarded contracts to the tune of almost five billion. How do you expect the new government to make up for the difference? You left such a mess in this economy that we are trying to solve. And today you sit on the sidelines and say, we are not managing that. Please, for the purposes of econ you know, economic development, we are all Ghanaians, please show us how you would have managed the economy considering the mess you left so that perhaps if we are doing anything wrong, we would have, would have you know, we will correct ourselves. But until you have been able to do that, mm. let us have some peace. Okay. Right. What, what were yeah. the two uh, uh, terms? The two, the two terms synonymous they use all the time. The one was corruption. And right. The, and the one was that we were not up to tax. In, in, in in incompetence. Those were. But now, it, if it, you it, prepare this kind of budget and you expect somebody to tell you that these are wrong and you tell me, that then we cut you. You are caught. How, how are they caught? You are caught. But what's the use of this parliament? No. Oh, okay. Oh, honestly, let's be fair. Let's what's see. the use of now, parliament? Now, what is the use of parliament? Yeah, so, so, now, so, 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 so uh, is, is it a suggestion <laughs> so, that so the it, minority cannot uh, flag these things at the no, 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 no. level and get them changed? And get them changed? Mm -hmm. What about if they did and they refuse? They should, they should have organized a press conference and you are known for that. No. What they about if they did conference. and they refuse? No. Oh, please. So, it, so it's possible? It, it's it might possible. Have been Some are flagged and, 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 and the minority of, no, no, And the minority of today did not organize a press conference. It's someone possible. was recently oh. joking that someone was recently joking <laughs> that the minority, press uh, but the, minor, the minority the the minority we are paying you back in your own oh, way so it's who not organized it's who not organized okay. so it's not about the development uh, no, of this country no, 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 it's not about the development no, of this country it's no, about paying uh, no, 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 because you have majority allow. you have majority mm. that any issue that you say bring it to parliament will vote so if we see any issue that that needs Ghanaians to know we'll Organize press conference, educate Ghanaians on it, and then allow you to vote. Someone use your majority power. They, 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 allow they you even, to use your majority power. They could even organize press conference okay. on behalf of the All press right. that I'm grateful. Process. Let's move on. Page 14 of the Today newspaper has a story. Uh, it says corruption will sink NPP government. That's Imani talking there. Uh, the story says that the Akufado government may pay dearly in the coming years if nothing is done to correct the perception of being corrupt. Thank you. Uh, in the minds of Ghanaians following the numerous corruption allegations that have been leveled against the party and the government. The first year of the NPP's administration has been rocked by a number of corruption allegations, including the bust uh, fuel uh, allegations by A+, plus, um, allegations of conflicts of interest against the finance minister over the bond, and recently the 800,000 cities for the creation of a website. Now, uh, this is what Franklin Kuju, president of Imani, is saying that such perceptions may sink the Akufuado government if pragmatic measures were not in place to correct the impression of corruption against a president who promised to protect the public purse. Now he's saying this, he says, and I think if care is not taken, in spite of the yet to be proven allegations of corruption within the NPP administration, it is the perception of people that may eventually sink the administration if they don't take care. That has been the trajectory in this country. In the instances where they have even been proven, you end up having government appointees defending what I call the indefensible. So for me, the perception is what we really need to be dealing with. Unfortunately, with corruption, perception seems to be the reality, he said. That's uh, Franklin Kujo talking. Then. And I'm, I'm again beginning with you because of this particular uh, statement that perception, uh, these are allegations, and that if it is not dealt with, it may uh, sink uh, the government. The, the, the president at the party's conference in Cape Coast uh, told the gathering and all Ghanaians that please report uh, 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 allegations of corruption uh, to him or to the appropriate uh, agencies and let's deal with it and even went ahead to say that those who report should be ready to provide the evidence now recently when he was in Kofodia in the eastern region he said that the allegations that are being reported are only to make his government unpopular and Imani is saying that you need to deal with these perceptions else it sinks the government the president seemed not to be too sure about what to do with these allegations he thinks that people are making them just to make his government uh, and, and popular. You see, <clears throat> that's the conclusion you'll come to mm. when you see the kind of developments you are seeing currently. We all know what, and right, I've just received the fact on the NHI payment, so you mm. can take a look at it okay. and then we'll deal with it. But here is it. 
you go about making a lot of allegations. These allegations are being investigated. And time upon time upon time, you realize that there's no meat to it. Take the bust issue. Till today, the NBC wants to make allegations that the bust issue amounts to corruption. How does it amount to corruption? That's, that's, that's a critical matter that in the coming days they will have to defend. If you say that something is corruption, show us. We have a generic definition of corruption. Mm. Show us how the bust matter amounts to corruption and then we can deal with it. I like the fact that Imani has been very categorical and I've sat, sat here and said the same thing previously, that what is happening is a certain perception that mm. is being created. And we know our friends in the NDC, they are very good at propaganda. <laughs> and, and their method of operation is very simple. Tell a lie, repeat the lie, keep telling that lie, and perhaps it will become the truth. So yeah. we have a situation where... That's interesting. Well, we have a situation <laughs> where you have a if group of people lie to power. Who, are, who are shouting themselves <laughs> hoarse that a government is corrupt. And yet, they cannot give one instance where corruption has been proven. Not one instance where corruption has been proven. In their time, we saw Jida. Jida was investigated, and it became clear that, yes, it was a scheme to loot the coffers of this country. It's established. The bus banding scandal was clear. The Wyoming -Wai scandal was more than clear. The various judgment death scandals were more than clear. Mm. These are not matters that are left to public perception. These are not matters that are left to me to come and sit here and say, this is corruption or this is not corruption. These are facts. They are established in the annals of history. No one can challenge these things. What we are dealing with now is a better group of politicians who feel as though they must come out there and attempt to taint this government with everything possible and so almost so, every so day. So you think for, for, for corruption, everything is fine with this you see, government? You see, the point I'm trying to make mm. is that if there is corruption. Let's deal with it. But if you have a group of people who are always making allegations, and at the end you, of the day, are you Nana, dealing with Nana, it? how do Can we I? deal with corruption? If the president himself says that, what is being alleged are just to make my government unpopular. Because, based, look, records, several records. There are several allegations that have come. Mm. The police have investigated. A lot of people, I mean, <laughs> several authorities have investigated. Can I finish? Uh, can I finish? Can I finish? Can and I finish? the president mentions uh, Mr. Alan Chiremartin's uh, issue and says that, well, these are allegations. So I is it not a way of discouraging those who want to who want to point out what is wrong? Why in, would in why would the president want to do that? When you are stated categorically, the state institutions do not need his authority to investigate some of these matters. Aside everything else, right? They have been look. Let's not forget this bond issue. They made a lot of noise about it. There's something. Wow. A, a, a lot of things have gone till today. What has come out? As we speak currently, what it's has come court. out? It, what what is in court? They've taken it to court. Who has it's taken just it to that court? the court is not yet. No, but who has taken it to so, court? Uh, 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 I know uh, uh, some people uh, uh, have taken uh, uh, the issue. Honorable man, you but taking a case to court allow. doesn't establish corruption. Mm. That's the point. Let the okay. court. No, but taking a case to court does it, it, not it establish doesn't. Of course, the corruption. Court will have to prove that's the, that that's the final it. matter. No, no, no. You, is, you oh, said that you haven't seen anything. So can I finish? Okay. And I'm telling you but that it's in court. No, that it's in court. Can I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish? Rapper. What they sought to do was create a whole hula baloo that some. Something See. untoward had been done. As of today, uh, they have not been... Oh, honorable, if you let me... You, you, you rapper. Thank you. Rapper. As of today, as we speak, not one thing has been proven that, yes, this was done and it was untoward. Now, as a president sitting there, he has seen all of these allegations coming up. And the only conclusion you are likely to draw is that, look, I have still opened the leeway. If anybody has any set of facts, go there and let's get them investigated. But what I'm beginning to see is a certain trend that people throw out these allegations, they make a lot of noise about it within the news, yeah. it occupies the news the news cycle for a period of time, but at the end of the day, there's nothing in it. Yeah. And that, you see, yeah, you know. the other side of it is that, the other mm. side of it is that when you do that consistently for a, for a period of time, mm. aside the fact that your credibility is ruined, you seriously dent the fight against corruption because it gets to a certain point where all people begin to see you as a noise maker, okay. a better noise maker who just wants to Look, be out there. Five uh, seconds addresses the fact to Honorable Ma. It, it, apart from a few instances where certain government appointees are before court, most corrupt allegations are, are seen or they are let out into the public when governments are out of power. Now, 
you think that we need to wait for this act to go on until a particular government is out before we can get to know that indeed they are corrupt acts? I don't think so. And I don't think that we'll make that mistake that they made. It's interesting, however, okay. that President Kufo's government was out of power in 2009. Mm. NDC was in power for eight years. Name one person that they were able to successfully prosecute in court okay. for being corrupt. Yet, they kept claiming consistently that the MPP is the most corrupt government that has ever been seen. Okay. Okay. They right. spent eight years. Right. If I may finish. Okay. If I may finish. If you've taken all the time. No, uh, but if you allow yes. me to You've taken all the time. They spent I'm eight years. No, no, they spent eight years. They spent eight years in power. There's you no were more not time. able to successfully spent, okay. prosecute <laughs> one. You've come again into you opposition see? and you're shouting. You see, brother. Thank you so much. You see, uh, my good friend Anna is having a hard time to keep explaining and explaining I don't and have defending. Any hard time. You are having no. a hard time sustaining your allegations. Look, no, it's so you are having a very hard time. Look, uh, you said that under NDC, you had this. Thing. Look, because of the, uh, the the president, he 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 did what? President Mahama pulled himself out and allowed investigation to go on. There were allegations that about That is him. why every about allegation him. that came, he no. said investigation. There were allegations no. about John no. Mahama himself. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Uh, uh, Do you know those allegations went to the, uh, the appropriate institution. Yes. What no. allegations? Chira, we investigated. investigated. Uh, 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 National Service, we investigated. What? No, the chart uh, Even the Gita, yes. we investigated. The cleared the president. Under Mahama, under he only under Mahama flouted Mahama. the code of conduct of public Is that corruption? No, no. But that's not correct. That's right. not what. No, no, no. The flouting no, no. of words. No, no, no. How do you defend corruption? No. Well, uh, that you, a certain president uh, issues no, no. instructions. Can I? Uh, uh, no, 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 have stopped using Hanas. Uh, uh, what's the guy name? Um, oh, they were using uh, no, Manas. Ma Manas. Manas. Oh, oh, really? We, we Manas in Azuri. That's that. That's no, no, no. Go to no, check Manas uh, Azuri. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, it's not uh, bad. Uh, uh, Manas in Azuri uh, uh, used uh, uh, to be. Uh, 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 Today, the word you use today, makes it seem yes, as if yeah, today, okay, please go and check. Mm. Today, check Manasi Azure. He says that the president, the president covered bust investigation. It was the president who invited your boss, the minister, Ajaku, and told him to go and withdraw the case. To Are go you and this, please, no, no, please, no, 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 please. It is there. Please. It's Manasi. Uh, please, it's Manasi. Uh, uh, please. 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 please, another one. Please, it's another one. Please, please, please. 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 please, no, 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 another one. Uh, uh, he, no, he, he, he said I, oh, those no, were no, those are writings of Manasi on his Facebook page. Can you can you please allow him? Can I finish? Okay. You understand? No, I check Manasi. No, no, no. I'm quoting Manasi as well. Another one. I can table. Another one. I can table. Please table. Oh, no, another one, one. Go you have not read check Manasi's post. Check Manasi. So uh, let's leave it check there. Manasi. And then, check uh, you, Manasi. since you have not read his post, no. let, let's, what we let's, let's, what let's what leave it there. Whatever. You, no, you allow him to finish. Allow him to. Nanda Ma, please allow him to finish. Honorable Ma, please go on. Before I bring it up. Manasi has already used, he traveled here from Ghana to Burkina Faso because of 100,000 allegations. Today, the president please flash the house. You can have people are people paid those are still allegations. Those money, those allegations. Right. We want him to investigate. That they don't come in seat and the hundred thousand seat you that you can sit back. No no no. No, we, no, no, no. We you want him to investigate. Charge. You want to we want him to so investigate. Call him and tell him. No, no, he, he should. But call what him and tell him. This is not a TV matter. Call him and tell no, him. No, no, no. It's uh, not a TV matter. Uh, uh, what what I'm just saying. Another one. <laughs> Please, uh, <laughs> allow him. Let me bring our mind. We'll take some <laughs> comments <laughs> and come back. <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> I'm grateful. I'm a good morning once Good me. morning. <laughs> Let me come in with messages from our viewers. It says, TV3 New Day, good morning. Merry Christmas and a prosperous new year to former President Mahama. May the new year be the year of great things to come. May God guide you for you to be able to achieve the better Ghana agenda. May God give you good health and love. 
long life. God continue to bless him and all the great NDC family. That's coming from Osma Bukurisong in Tamale. Also, TV3, help me wish my daughter Elois Azayeta Abilba happy birthday from the father, Jerry Abilba. Happy birthday to my lovely fiancé, Asari Dako Godfred, alias Gadros. Um, he says, may the Lord, well, it's time to wish people birth happy birthdays, but we'll read that later. Also, it says, wishes you and all the family Merry Christmas and a prosperous, prosperous New Year. Certainly, same to you. Good morning, guys. You're doing well. I'm impressed. I want to wish my colleagues, minister, deputies, directors, and all others at the Ministry of Communications a very Merry Christmas. That's coming from George Mensa. Also, wow, you guys have got such a wonderful show. I'm Bella, and this is my first time watching your show. I want to wish a happy Merry Christmas to my family, especially my sister and husband. Also says, Bright, it is difficult to live in Ghana, especially if the individual is a graduate from UCC and UEW Colleges of Distant Education. We, the members of the Unemployed Teachers Association, want the Ghana Education Service to consider our members for recruitment into the service. That's coming from Al Hassan Bako, National President of the Unemployed Teachers Association of Ghana. Also, Bright, why do you allow this NDC man to continue misleading the public? Can the NDC man point one social intervention? that touched ordinary Ghanaians like NPP policies that's coming from MT Ibrahim in the northern region also the NPP should always tell Ghanaians the true state of the nation nation's economy they are throwing dust into our eyes good morning is Dama calling NDC liars after Nada lied to Ghanaians that 51 factories will, will be built within its first year of administration that's a question from Kwamina in Takrade also, someone says, good morning, Mr. Bright and your panelists. Please ask the NDC man to tell Ghanaians what they have done in one year in office when we voted for them. We're they should, I think that they should <laughs> give <laughs> us a break. Government should this note, nurses are support. waiting for their posters, postings, as <laughs> they have been promised in the month of okay, January no, I, I and I think the, the person actually is referring to the NDC. That's what not, I thought. Yeah, but not the NDC. Yes, yeah. that, that's what I would have thought as well. But anyway, no. another one coming in from Faras at Pandai says, first. Good morning, <laughs> Bright. Please tell MPP <laughs> that under NDC, corruption <laughs> allegations <laughs> were investigated <laughs> by BNI, Shraj, etc. But not Flagstaff House like it's being done under Nana Adodankwe Kufuado. Is Flagstaff House now BNI? That's a question from for us. Also, good morning and Merry Christmas to you all. Mr. Bright, kindly ask the MPP man to face the real facts and stop giving us excuses. We were promised one district, one factory. We'll commence before the end. But till today, nothing has happened. Now the president is announcing to Ghanaians to be hopeful. Hopeful of what? That's coming from Seth inside a flower. Also, good morning, TV3. What the MPP man is saying is not true. Because when they came, they didn't do anything. MPP, asked, they have come to spend Ghana, Ghanaians' money. I guess that's what he wants to say. And that's coming from Kwabna in Dodua. So, right, that's all that has come in right. so far from and I'm our grateful. viewers. Uh, keep those comments coming in. We'll read them in the course of the conversation. Right. Now, uh, let's turn attention to this one. Except uh, a quick one uh, at this and then we can move on. Um, the minority is asking for an apology from the Israeli ambassador, uh, suggesting that Ghana's vote uh, at the UN Assembly uh, was a mistake. Lot. And has even gone ahead to warn Ghana not to repeat the mistake. But your message is not coming. Uh, I'll beat you. <laughs> oh, but they, they have made it, they are, they are, they are point known that they think that the Israeli ambassador should should oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's the opinion. I, I really don't know. The, the situation in which I find myself is I'm being asked to give an opinion about an opinion. Right. And I, I, I don't know what to say in that regard. I think that they have spoken their opinion. The government has also adequately reacted to the issue of the Israeli uh, ambassador. This geopolitics sometimes gets very difficult, but I think that, honestly, personally, he overstepped his boundaries in, 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 in doing some of these things. It's a new era. We are beginning to see new uh, developments in geopolitics mm. around the world. With the election of Trump and, and, and Putin's recent uh, forays into areas that are I do are strange. There. With the election of Trump and Nana <laughs> Kufado. I'll ignore that. But <laughs> I'll ignore that. But you see, with the election of Trump is on one side, mm. and the election of Nana Dudanko Akufado gives hope right. to the entirety of the world that at least level-headed leaders, people who are bold enough to speak their points, 
when he was able to stand in front of the French president and speak clearly on a Ghana beyond it. That tells you that there are some African leaders who are still visionary, who still have the guts to say what has to be said when it needs to be said. I'm grateful. Honorable Ma, wrap up for me. Uh, well, uh, uh, thank, uh, I need to um, uh, wish each and every Ghanaian a happy and a prosperous New Year. 2018. Uh, 2018. And uh, pray to the Almighty Allah to give us strength and courage to withstand this uh, 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 year. It's not going to be easy. <laughs> it's a very uh, uh, cut and paste uh, budget. And so, uh, no, I'm not Prophet, Prophet Abdul. I'm just giving, the, <laughs> even though the president is giving, the year us, hasn't started. The president is giving us hope, but uh, I just mm. pray that uh, we get the strength okay. to withstand this uh, okay. horrendous and communist, communist government. No problem. If we survive John Mahama, okay. we'll survive Nana, this. Uh, Nana 2018. <laughs> well, 2018, I believe, is a year that Ghana is going yes, to see Guardians, a number, uh, of, a number of very, very significant interventions as well. Government is going to attempt to roll out some very significant measures that will ease the, the, the struggles that we have in this country. We are not promising that everything will change in one day. But what we are promising Ghana is, is that you see concrete, measured steps that are meant to transform in a considerable way the economy of this country. All right. We are not going to have it all smooth. It will come with its fair share of, of difficulties. Is it, is it another campaign? It will come, it will come with its fair <laughs> share of, of challenges. But what we are urging all of Ghana to do is to rally behind this government mm -hmm. and let us together put our hands to the wheel and get Ghana to work once again. I'm grateful. He is a member of the MPP's uh, communication to Mana Damwa, and I also had uh, Honorable Alhazan Uma, member of parliament for the Zabzugu constituency, a member of the NDC. Gentlemen, grateful for your time. I wish you a great Thank new you. year 2018. Thank we hope you. to see you more in 2018. Those of you who send your comments, uh, we wish you a happy new year. To stay with us, there is more. The African Youth Choir is in the studio. They have more coming up. Stay with us.
so joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. Joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. Right in my soul, joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. Joy, joy, joy. Well, well, joy like a river in my soul. And that was a beautiful one from African Youth Choir. But in this festive season, it's time to also talk about your health. Because certainly at this point in time, people just binge and drink and have fun and forget that their health comes first. And we're going to be talking about health. I'm being joined by Erwin Boating. He's the founder and president for Quality Health Care Africa, or Quality Health Africa, sorry. Good morning. Good morning. Ellen. So let's delve right into it. What is your mandate as Quality Health Ghana, what, or Africa? What exactly are you a group to do? Um, as Quality Health Africa, our mission is really to strengthen the healthcare system um, through education, training, facility renovation, and outreaches mm. that aim to really tackle um, the issues that are um, hurting our country health in, uh, in healthcare. Right. So currently in Ghana or in Africa, what have you been able to achieve? And then in the Christmas period, what are you doing for Ghanaians out there? Um, I think we've, we've been able to achieve a lot by screening over mm. 25,000 people uh, for the past uh, four years mm. and donated almost $900,000 worth of medical supplies and equipment to uh, facilities across the country. And um, in light of the Christmas spirit, we're just promoting, you know, healthy uh, living mm. um, in Ghana. Because, you know, you do realize when the Christmas season comes, you kill the goats and the cows and then you eat the oily food. So we mm -hmm. just want to uh, caution people whilst they're enjoying the good and juicy foods that I enjoy mm. too. You know, you exercise and then uh, keep health in, 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 in mind. So in this season, where are you going to be located in, for the screening purposes okay. so people can come there right. and be screened? Um, so this year we're going to be in three regions. We're going to be in the eastern region, um, Busoso, tomorrow. Mm. Um, and then we are also, um, on Friday, okay. uh, we're going to be in the eastern region, Busoso. That's 29th. 29th of December. And then on January 5th, we're going to be in Adafo, mm -hmm. uh, which is in the Volta region. And then the week after that, we're going to be um, at Bui in the Upper East region, mm. where we're going to have outreaches to people in that area. Right. So in the next five years, where should we see Quality Health Africa on the Ghana you know, platform? Mm. Where would you be? In the next five years, our objective is really to um, embody healthcare, the quality mm. healthcare that is deserved in Ghana and Africa. And uh, right now we own facilities in Ghana. We are hoping to set the example for the kind of healthcare services that is deserved by Ghanaians and Africans in the sub-Saharan sector. Mm. So we hope to have medical facilities all across the sub-Saharan sector serving people in underprivileged communities. Mm. Right, you talk about the underprivileged you know, communities and when it comes to even the appreciation of the fact that they have certain health conditions which require medical treatment Correct. is a problem because oftentimes they fall back on the traditional methods which we won't say are necessarily bad but they don't always all go well because right. it will at least it may be good if they put the two together. What kind of advice then do you give to those people in these underprivileged communities? You know, it's, it's amazing you mentioned traditional medicine because in our summits, mm. uh, that was one of the key discussions we had, the correlation between, you know, orthodox uh, medicine and traditional medicine. The advice to them is um, to seek or uh, to consult a doctor. Mm. You know, there are some traditional medications that are effective and working, mm. but I believe when you go to the traditional um, hospital, you are getting uh, a highly concentrated treatment that is specific to the issue you're having uh, mm. versus a lot of the traditional um, strategies are not streamlined and are more on a test and basis. Right. Yeah, yeah. So finally, going out there, what 
um, when it comes to education, because you do training, you do education, and you're trying to equip the health system. Correct. What are some of the challenges you have found out on our Ghanaian health system platform, and what are you doing to plug those loopholes? Okay. So one of the big issues we found is cultural differences. Mm. You know, um, in Ghana, we have over 10 different languages and so the challenge we face is we go to a place like Bui in the Upper East region mm. if we're not equipped with somebody who speaks the language mm. then we we run into a challenge whereby we are unable to effectively communicate with them so um, the way we overcome that challenge is by um, empowering the local community leaders mm. to be the face of all our outreaches and then we we, we promote health literacy okay. and so we work hand in hand with Medical Journalism Association of Ghana uh, to help us transcribe and translate our training okay. um, to the various communities. Right, to the local dialect of those communities. Correct, correct, right. correct. Nice. So a final message out there. It's Christmas, many people are going to celebrate with family and friends. They're going to drink. They're going to have fun. Yes. What would you tell them about their health, even as they have fun? As you know, family? one thing I'm going to say is, and uh, I fall victim for that. When I come to Ghana, I can't wait to eat the fun eyes, the goat meat, and all the meat pies and the good food. Mm. but make sure you keep your health um, in your mind make sure you go and get screened by um, you know a doctor go to the lab um, exercise you know one thing that I do in Ghana a lot is I walk a lot mm. you know um, sometimes I'll go to the beach and just walk for about three or five miles you'll be surprised how much that enhances mm. your health so just be very cautious of what you're eating because health is wealth mm. you know um, um, I would you would pay a million bucks to be alive so you, you have to be uh, conscious of your health very well so you heard it from Erwin Boateng. He's the founder and president for Quality Health Africa. And he certainly says, of course, you have to have fun. But as you do that, think about your health because your health is wealth. On that note, we still have more melodies from African Youth Choir, which they're going to treat us to. Let's enjoy this. Give 
Thank you so much, African Youth Choir. Mm. If you didn't move in your house whilst they're playing this music, <laughs> then you have a fracture. Come and visit me and let me mend you. Because you certainly mm. should have moved a bone or two mm. whilst they sang that song to glorify God. It's uh, a good time. I'm excited I tell you, that they're here with us today. Yes, exactly. It's wonderful. Mm. I mean, to be alive all this while. We started a journey on the 1st of January 2017. We cannot say how many of us have departed mm. and how many of us are still alive. But if you are, then what you need to do is to give thanks and praises to the one who sits high up there. It's a wonderful time to say uh, thanks to the Almighty God. And what else can we give you but to get the African Youth Choir yep. to lead you in singing praises to Almighty God. We can't wait to enter 2018 with them. Mm -hmm. We're grateful for your time, particularly those of you who are watching us. Uh, join, Just join us in the dancing, okay? It's a wonderful day. We're alive mm -hmm. and we're kicking. But, and you know what the last song says? It says, me suro a tamfu mm. biara because uh, nyami kawonho. Certainly, right. if you didn't get any word from God, mm. this should be the word that you should walk into 2018 with. Don't be afraid of whatever lies ahead. Know that the person whom you know or whom you put your trust in, which is God, mm. has taken care of everything for you. And so 2018 certainly promises to be a blessed and a great year. Mm. But exactly. And if, if he's been able to look after you for mm. about 300 days, how many more days to the end of the year? Just mm. about five yeah. or six days and we'll head to the new year. So if he's managed to take you through uh, the... Uh, the, the, the bad times, the bad situations, and you have five more days, what more can he say? He's promising that he will take you on to the year 2018. And I love that, that uh, we don't even care about who uh, is against us. Once we know the one we serve is in the vessel, mm -hmm. we'll always smile at a storm. That's what we're promising. The African Youth Choir is still with us, mm -hmm. and we don't want to talk too much because <laughs> we're preparing ourselves for 2018. We're, le we're leaving you in their hands and they're going to rock you the last about five minutes more to the end of the show and they will please join them in dancing mm -hmm. sing praises to god Certainly. we'll be here tomorrow morning to take you through another exciting journey into 2018. Mm -hmm. this is new day the award-winning show mm -hmm. the show that makes your morning a great one the african youth choir is wrapping up the show have a blessed day mm. <laughs> see you soon Make a
Señor. 